Hey everybody, Playtendo Guy here. I'm back with another video. Hope you're all doing well and keeping safe and thank you for joining me for another video. Today it's time for another Blu-ray and 4K pickups video where I'll go through everything that I've had picked up, delivered over the past few weeks. I did do a video a few days ago where I showed you some of the stuff that I picked up. This is part two of it with a load more other stuff to show you. Some 4Ks, some more Blu-rays, some big releases as well. Quite a fair bit to get through. So without further ado, let's get into it. So greetings and salutations everybody. Hope you're all doing well and keeping safe and thank you for joining me for another video another blu-ray haul and a continuation of what i've picked up recently there's quite a few titles here to get through some big budget blockbusters a couple of tv series and a few hidden gems so a lot to get through so first up is the biggest film of last year and yes you've guessed it it's barbie i picked this one up in the cell i did enjoy this one when i went to go and see this in the cinema in the summer i thought it was a lot of fun Yes, it had its issues, but it's a charm film. Ryan Gosling is easily the best thing about it. His song, I'm Just Ken, is an absolute great tune. And there's a lot of charm here. There is a lot of issues, but overall, it was a fun time. And it's easy to see why it was the biggest hit of last year. When it came out on Blu-ray and 4K, I was like, yeah, I did want to get it. But I held off to a sale. I was going to get it on 4K, but I thought... Might as well just get it on Blu-ray. And for Tanner, I couldn't say no. Comes in this rather lovely uh, pink case, which you don't see much for Blu-rays now. So I saw that this pink case version was also selling out quite quickly. So I snapped it up in the sale for Tanner. Looking forward to re-watching this one, seeing if it holds up. Um, I know it was a very funny film at, at the time, but will it have the same effect when watching it again? I don't know, but that is Barbie. Barbie without the other one now. The film that also launched the same day at cinemas, and that's Oppenheimer. Wow, what a fantastic film. Absolutely adored this back in the cinema when I saw this. For it was intelligent storytelling and engrossing uh, story with great performances all round. Easily, easily the best Christopher Nolan film. I'm not a huge Nolan fan, but my word, this was incredible filmmaking. Fantastic story. Um, I really liked how it changed from black and white, and the explosion test was incredible. There's hints of horror here as well. Um, and Killian Cillian Murphy definitely deserves all the uh, applause he can get. He, he needs to win the Best Actor Oscar, because he was incredible in this. A three-hour political drama about the guy who created the bomb was going to make nearly a billion in the box office you wouldn't have thought it but it did and i had to get this on 4k um christopher nolan shot this in imax and this film looks outstanding it's one of the best 4ks out there so three disc set you get the film on blu-ray 4k and you also get a blu-ray bonus disc with a load of special features so i do want to check out the special features and give this another rewatch. I just popped the disc in and had a look at some of the scenes, and wow, looks absolutely outstanding. So that is Oppenheimer. It's a recent TV miniseries that I actually really did enjoy when it returned. Well, I haven't been a big fan of it quite recently, but these three specials were actually not too bad. And yes, you've guessed it, it's the Doctor Who's 60th anniversary specials. I never thought I'd be standing here saying I picked up the latest Doctor Who DVD, but here I am, oh, the latest Blu-ray. The Jodie Whittaker era, as we all know, was a bit of a mess. For me, it did not work. And when David Tennant was returning, I was like, great idea, but I tempered my expectations, and wow. It, it's like he's never left. Same with Catherine Tate. It's a lot of fun. The issues of the Whitaker era still stand, but they're nowhere near as prominent as they were in the Whitaker era. I thought the Star Beast was great fun. It was daft. It was just fun, and that's what Doctor Who needs to be. 
Wild Blue Yonder was something a little bit different and I think this is going to be an episode that will improve over time and over multiple rewatches. And the final episode, The Giggle, was brilliant. I thought Neil Patrick Harris as the toy maker was incredible. I, I could have had another half an hour of that episode. It felt like it was over way too short. But these three episodes I thought were fun. Were they, were they as good as the old Doctor Who with David Tennant? Probably not. But it's a better direction Doctor Who's in now than it was when Jodie Whittaker was in. And the higher budget definitely is going to show because some of the CGI looks fantastic. Very happy to have this in the collection. Who'd have thought it? New Doctor Who Blu-ray and I'd actually get it. There's a load of bonus features here as well but I haven't had time to check them out but I'm looking forward to re-watching these in a couple of months time and seeing if my opinion changes on them somewhat. So that's Doctor Who the 60th anniversary special. Next up there was a sale on BFI and I'm not a big Buy of BFI films, I think the only one I do have is the wonderful Get Carter big box set that they did on Blu-ray and 4K a couple of years ago. Had to get that, big fan of the film and thought it was a tremendous release. So I picked up two films in the 7 dollars uh, BFI sale. Picked up a French film on BFI, yeah, a French film, British Film Institute, I don't know how that works out. But I picked up La Haine, starring uh, Vincent Cassell. Um, I think Vincent Cassell is a great actor, definitely uh, one of French, uh, one of France's best actors out there. Haven't got a clue what the film is about, but I know that it is rather illustrious. A lot of people really do enjoy it, and I thought for the price of seven ninety nine, normally twenty quid, it's worth a go. And it's a two disc set with an absolute cornucopia of special features. So that's La Haine. Next up is Naked by Mike Lee, and wow. This is a rough film, starring David Thwalis from Prisoner of Azkaban and um, Wonder Woman. He plays a guy here called Johnny, and he's on the on the run from the cops. He's he was in Manchester, but he's on the run from the cops. He ends up going back to I think London to meet his ex, who's played by uh, Leslie Sharp, and this is where things take a turn for the dark. He tries to um turn on the uh charm and target her vulnerable housemate and he does some very very unsavory and nasty things to women he's a he's a really cruel character in this and it is quite a grim dirty film has a really good script in it and i think mike lee did a great job at directing it i remember seeing this about a couple of years ago and thought it was a thoroughly good if quite uncomfortable film um, it does have a load of special features here as well, so I'm looking forward to checking them ones out, especially like, um, Interview and Audio Commentary with David Thwalis. I do like him as an actor, I think he's really good. Great to see that it's actually released on Blu-ray and by BFI Films, so I'm looking forward to checking out the transfer on that. It is easily the biggest release last month, I think, on 4K, and one that a lot of people have been waiting for for a very long time. It's a James Cameron film. No, it isn't The Abyss, but it is Titanic. Yes, Titanic finally came out on 4K, and wow. So glad to finally actually have a physical copy of Titanic. The only other copy of Titanic I have is on VHS, and I think it's the double uh, VHS one because the film is so long. Haven't checked out this 4K transfer yet, but I'm looking forward to spending an afternoon or an evening giving this a watch watching it in 4k i've heard the transfer looks absolutely spectacular cameron went back and redone it all and did it properly unlike terminator 2 there's a load of bonus features here apparently there's over 15 hours of bonus features here such as new documentaries and interviews and so much more so wow very happy with this this one was quite a more expensive 4k release normally these um legacy 4K is only about 20 quid, but this one was 25. But I did see the difference with transfer, and it was quite a huge jump. And also, you do get three discs here, so I thought it was worth the, the buy. It's over three hours long, but wow, what a film, and I cannot wait to revisit it. Slipcover is really nice, and I think the artwork is perfection. So, 
That is Titanic on 4K. The first of many James Cameron and hopefully more Fox films coming out on 4K from Disney. Very happy chap with this one. Next up is honestly one of the most creepiest, disturbing films I've ever seen. Probably the most scariest ending to a film ever, and that is The Vanishing. This was on sale in HMV for ten ninety nine, but they sold out, but they did have it on Amazon for the same price, so I picked it up straight away. Absolutely love this film. Easily like a 5 out of 5 film. It is so good. Follows a young couple as they go to France for a holiday. They stop off at a service station. He fills up the car with petrol or whatever, and she goes to pay for it. But she never comes back. Searching frantically for her. Cannot find her. The police investigate and it's a there's no evidence no nothing it's, it's like she never existed she vanishes off the face of the earth pretty much with no trace and this leaves a partner in such a, a mental wreck it does and he spends years and years trying to find her joins him again three years later then he starts to get postcards from the abductor of uh, his partner trying to goad him into this dangerous cat and mouse game. It is a totally thrilling, unnerving film that keeps you on the edge of your seat. And my word, the finale is grim. It is so grim. And it keeps you thinking long after the credits roll. And I still think about that and now, and it sends a shiver down my spine. You think Eden Lake is bad? Check this one out. Because this one's even worse, I think. It says it's a 15 plus, but it was actually rated by the BBFC as a 12 plus. No blood, no no, no real violence in it at all. But my word, it's one of the most creepiest, unsettling films of all time. And that's The Vanishing. So anyway, that's everything I picked up recently. There's a lot there. Looking forward to re-watching Barbie and Oppenheimer. And looking forward to giving Lahaina a watch. Always been wanting to give that a watch. I've heard such amazing things about it. And you know what? I think I'm going to pop on The Vanishing again because it's such a magnificent film. So yeah, that's everything I picked up recently. Tell me in the comment section down below what you think of the titles that I picked up recently. Have you seen The Vanishing? Do you... Do you agree with me if that ending is really creepy and sends a shiver down your spine? Anyway, comment down below, have a chat about movies, talk about what you've picked up recently. And again, thanks ever so much for taking the time out of your day for watching my video. Really do appreciate it. You stay safe, take care, and I'll see you all on the next video. Bye.